right, and for the last one, number 13, we have that a ball is dropped from a height of 1.8 meters and bounces on the ground. The maximum height reached by the ball after each bounce is 85% of the previous maximum height. All right, so let's add a little, little bit of perspective to this. So 1.8 meters, see, is the first one, which is over here. So 0, 1.8 meters. And the following ones are 85% of the previous maximum height. So this one, okay, because it's 85% uh, less than the last one, ¿cierto? Is basically, there's a decrease of 15% here. See? There's another decrease of 15% with the last one, and so on and so forth, okay? So that is what it means by the 85%. All right, for part A, we need to show that the maximum height reached by the ball after it has bounced for the sixth time is 68 centimeters to the nearest centimeter. All right, so um, here, I think the tough part is actually identifying what type of problem it is, okay? And so because we have an initial bounce, the first one, second, third, fourth, etc., you can kind of look at it as a sequence. See? And so this is a sequence that is decreasing by a certain amount. Now, in which nature is it decreasing? It is decreasing in a percent. Okay? So it is not decreasing by a flat value. We're not saying that each time it's minus 3, minus 3. We're saying that it is minus 15% in respect to the last one. Okay? So it's not a, it might start with minus 3, but then it's going to be minus 2, then it's going to be minus 1.5, you know, stuff like that. See? And so because it is not decreasing in a linear fashion, we have a da -da -da, geometric sequence. And so let's talk about that first. See, so I'm going to pull up my formula booklet. I'm going to go ahead and look for sequence. And here we have, we have arithmetic up top, arithmetic, arithmetic, geometric, geometric. And so arithmetic is going to be adding or subtracting. Geometric is going to be multiplying or dividing. Okay, because we're talking about a percent, 85%, this is the same as 0 0.85, and it affects each term individually, it's not gradual, it's going to be a geometric sequence. Okay, so these are the formulas that I can play around with, and we can work from there, all right? So, for part A, we need to show that the maximum height reached the red ball after it has bounced for the sixth time, okay, is 68 centimeters to the nearest centimeter. All right, interesting. So, um, the nth term of a geometric sequence, the one up top, asks for un, which equals u1, r to the power of n minus 1. All right, so because we're talking about the sixth time, that, that is a big hint that n has to equal 6. So I'm going to go ahead and put that. So we have u6 equals u1 times r to the power of 6 minus 1. All right, what else can I fill in? Well, this r, what is this r? r accounts for rate of change. If you notice, here I have r for geometric sequences. I have a bunch of r's. And for arithmetic sequence, I have a bunch of d's these nuts <laughs> a bunch of these for difference okay d for difference all right r for rate of change d for difference arithmetic geometric blah 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 see so what is my rate of change here well i know that it decreases by 15 percent and so i'm going to go ahead and say that r is 0 0.85 since it is 85 percent from the last bounce it decreases by 15 percent 100 minus 15% gives you that 85, okay? Cool, so I'm going to have that u6 equals u1 times 0 0.85 to the power of 6 minus 1. And last but not least, I need to find what the heck u1 is, see? So, um, this here technically would be sort of like my u0, see? After the first bounce, I'm going to have my u1, then I have my u2, then I have my u3. All right. Cool. So how can I find U1? Well, U1 is simply going to be applying this 85% once. To what do I apply it? To U0. At what height is it? At 1.8. So I'm going to take this 
apply it, apply like the rate of change only once. And this right here is going to be U1. See, I could technically do this five more times and get my answer, but I'd rather figure out what U1 is right away for purposes of the problem. Okay. But U1, as we just found out, is going to be this 1.8 times the rate of change only once. U1 is going to be 1.53. All right, so now I can solve it. So U6 equals U1, which is 1.53 times 0 0.85 to the power of 6 minus 1. You put all of that into your calculator. U6 is going to give you let's find out actually let's find out so it's going to give me 1.53 parentheses 0 0.85 to the power of 6 minus 1 it gives me that number see so it's going to give me 0 0.6788 now because i need to round it to the nearest centimeter okay that means i will be picking on wait actually it gave me a decimal Yo, that's weird. All right, give me a second. All right, perfect. So this right here, okay, I know it looks a little bit weird, but because it's in decimal, okay, this is actually a meter. So this is 0 0.67 meters. All right, how do I know that? I know that because this 1.8, is in meters okay so that means that since I'm working with meters this is 0 0.67 meters and if I turn that into centimeters right I have 100 centimeters in one meter so that means that this u6 is actually uh, 67.88 centimeters and since I'm rounding to the nearest centimeter the nearest centimeter is gonna be comparing this guy with this guy to round it up or down around it up because it's above five so u6 is going to be 68 u6 is going to be 68 68 what 68 centimeters so that is for part a okay and now for part b we need to find the number of times after the first bounce that the maximum height reached is greater than 10 centimeters all right cool so what we need to understand here is the following 10 centimeters because this is in meters okay 10 centimeters are going to be i don't know like 0.1 yeah and at some point with some of these bounces at some point it's not going to cross 0.1 anymore okay and so i can actually set it up with math language in the following way i can say i need to find anything that is greater than 0.1 all right, so this is how I'm going to start. It has to be greater than 0.1. And what goes here? Well, here goes uh, whichever term breaks that pattern. See? So let's say after this pattern, dale, after this guy here, after this guy here, the rest of them is less than 0.10. And so from here to the left are all the ones I need to count. So this is the guy we're about to discover, right? And how do I express this guy here? Well, we have our equation down here, this guy there, this guy here, okay? What is that asking for? Well, it's the nth term of a geometric sequence. So that would allow us to find that specific term if we just leave n as a variable, see? So we don't know what n this is, but we know that it has, needs to be greater than 0.1, see? So what is that n? Well, I can just go ahead and plug it in. So I have u1. times r to the power of n minus 1. I already know u1, ¿cierto? We said that u1 was 1.53 from back here. So we can have 1.53 times r. r, we said, was 0 0.85, okay, to the power of n minus 1. And if I find the value of n, I'm going to be finding this guy here, and I can work from there. All right. Okay, there's a couple of ways to approach this. And I know some of you are thinking, damn, I have an exponent. I mean, I have a variable in my exponent. That shit's fucked. See? 
So what we can do to solve that, or my favorite trick, is calc intersect. See? So you're going to call this y1, call this y2, do calc intersect, and that helps you play around the fact that you have a variable on your exponent. See? So you will be basically asking your calculator what makes this true. So if I put 0 0.1 here, on the other side I find 1.53 times 0 0.85 to the power of n minus 1. And I graph it and find the intersect. I will find my key point. See? If you're a little bit confused with the calc intersect, I do have a video on it. But the intuition that I can share with you now is that wherever these two lines intersect is what makes it sort of like true. Okay? And so that's going to be my key point. And with context, I can figure it out. All right, so here I see one of my lines. I do not see point one. Got to play around with my window a little bit until it shows up. Going to go ahead and put y max is 1, y minimum is 0. And I think it might show up now, actually. I think I might, I'm probably going to make a bigger x. I'll put like 25. Play from there. Yeah. That is actually a pretty good graph. So now if I do calc intersect, I can work from there. See? All right. It gives me 17.78. So that means that in my term number 17.78 and onwards, it is not greater than 10. So that means that my term 17 and back is greater than 10. Perfect. So if I literally write calc intersect, yes, you can do this in your test and get full credit. You can say that you got 17.7, 17 point, sorry, 7.4. 0.78 and that that means that for part B it happens 17 times in fact you can pretty much write that n had to be 17.8 or 17.78 and you are good to go see all right then now for part C probably the hardest one see we have that we need to find the total vertical distance traveled by the ball from the point at which it is dropped until the fourth bounce. All right, so let me just make some space because we are going to need it. Now let's really dig into like the heart of this problem, okay? So on one side, okay, you have your terms that you plug in, your u0, u1, etc. And then you have, um, and then you have like what each term represents. See, so the what the term represents is the total height. See, it's always going to give you the, the maximum height after that bounce. OK. And so what I can actually do is use the following formula. I can use the formula over here for sum of n terms of a finite geometric sequence. And so let's take a second and see that I have two equations. I can either use the one on the left or the one on the right. The one on the left, what does it ask for? It asks for u1, it asks for r, it asks for n. The one on the right asks for u1, asks for r, asks for n. So I can use either, okay? It doesn't matter. Now, why is it worth asking yourself, what do you need? Because whenever you use the arithmetic one, it does matter, see? For the one on the left, you need n, you need u1, you need n, you need d, okay? I marked n twice, my bad. And on the right side, you need n, you need u1, and you need un. Okay, you do not need d for the one on the right. So there is a difference here. There isn't a difference on the bottom. So whatever. I'm going to use this one here. All right. Oops, I'm going to use the one on the right. I mean, is that it? So because I am now analyzing, um, from the point at which it is dropped, okay, my u1, in a way, is going to be this 1.8, see? So bear with me for a sec, it'll make sense in a second. I'm going to go ahead and put that my u1 for now is 1.8, see? Again, context matters, because we're doing it from the point at which it's dropped, my u1 is now 1.8, see? u1 is 1.8, r is still going to be 0 0.85. 
And we're, since we're going until the fourth bounce, n has to be 4. So, we pull up my equation. It looks something like this. S of n equals u1, parentheses, 1 minus r to the power of n, parentheses close, denominator 1 minus r. All of this with r not being equal to 1. Okay, so if I go ahead and start plugging in, I'm first going to plug in that n is 4. So s 4 equals u1, 1 minus r to the power of n, and n is 4. This is an r divided by 1 minus r. All right, let's go ahead and plug in u1 now. We said that u1 was 1.8, so I'm going to put 1.8 over here. Let's go ahead and plug in r, which we said was 0 0.85. So here it is. And 0 0.85. All right, cool. So if I plug all of this into my calculator, I end up with 5.7359.25. Now, this is the sum of all of my terms. See? Now, here is something kind of weird, okay? These terms are basically adding this height. See? They are adding this height. But what we need to understand, okay, what we need to understand is that that height is traveled twice. Because we're talking about vertical distance, okay, that height is covered here and it is covered here. Both of those are vertical distance, okay? Both of these are vertical distance. So right now, what my sum formula did is that it added this, well, technically, it added this, this, this and this. Ah, it added all of those. And so from one side, I actually need to subtract this guy, which is how much? 1.8. So I'm going to go ahead and take that guy and subtract 1.8 from it. And I also need to understand that because all the distances are covered twice, first in blue, then in red, see? It means I have to multiply it by 2. So if I multiply by 2 and also subtract 1.8, I end up with 9.67185. Don't forget your units meters. Significant figures, 9.67 meters. And that would be for part C. Probably the weirdest one. I think the context matters a lot there. See? Take a minute. Really try to absorb it. Have clear why you subtracted 1.8. I'm just going to explain it one more time. This 1.8 gets deleted because the sum formula is adding this guy here. So you have to subtract it. It's 1.8. You have to subtract it. And you have to multiply by 2 because the sum formula is only adding this height here. See? When in fact you need to add when it goes up, when it goes down. When it goes up, when it goes down. If you use it only once, you're adding only if it goes up. Or only if it goes down. But you need both. So... That actually concludes this paper. That is for number 13. And yeah, I hope it helped.